We all know the racehorse named Sham, mostly from seeing him finish second to Secretariat in the 1973 Kentucky Derby and Preakness, as well as a very, very, very distant last to him in that unforgettable Belmont Stakes. However, other than those races, most people probably don't know that Sham was a very talented horse in his own right. He was just overshadowed that year by one of the best there ever was. Sham was a dark brown son of pretense out of the mare Sequoia. Sequoia was sired by perhaps one of the best distance and endurance sires of the time, Prince Quillo. If that name sounds a little familiar, it should be, because who else was sired by Prince Quillo? Why, none other than Something Royal, who on that cold winter morning of 1970 gave birth to the one and only Secretariat. So the horses are linked in that way as well. Owned by Sigmund Summer and trained by Frank Poncho Martin, Sham was considered the West Coast's best challenge to the big Red Express train from Meadow Stable in the 1973 Run for the Roses. But to be considered that, he had to prove he was better than another top three-year-old in California at the time named Linda's Chief, who was trained by a young man who soon would become one of the top trainers of all time, Bobby Frankel a man who would actually have what some consider to be one of the best horses of all time named after him. But that's for another day. Linda's chief had beaten Sham in the San Felipe. Two weeks later, they met in the top West Coast Derby prep, the San Anita Derby. Linda's chief was a front-running type who could win races on the front end very easily. So Pancho Martin decided to also enter a horse named Nightly Dawn to hopefully keep Linda's chief honest in the early going. Or was there a more devious reason for entering the horse? Adding to the intrigue was that the jockey for Nightly Dawn was changed that morning from the very successful Jorge Tierra to the well past his prime Ismael Valenzuela. No one was certain why the change was made, but it did raise some eyebrows. Not as many eyebrows, though, as what happened after the start of the race. As you can see, 50 or so yards from the gate, Nightly Dawn came over sharply on Linda's Chief and took away all chance of him getting to the front. Completely compromised from his normal running style, Linda's Chief could do no better than second to Sham at the finish. Linda's Chief jockeys filed an immediate claim of foul against Nightly Dawn. In those days, if one part of an entry was disqualified, both parts were. So Sham, even though he did nothing wrong, would have been disqualified from the win. The stewards eventually did not allow the claim and the results stood. Was there a setup? Was the contact intentional? Poncho, of course, said no, as did the jock, but the racing world still debates that to this day. Sham went on to the Wood Memorial, when was the last time you heard that happening in modern times, to finish second to Anglelight and defeating Secretariat, who was not at his best because of an abscess on his lip. The rest of his run in the Triple Crown, as they say, is history. Whatever happened to Sham after that Triple Crown run? Well, actually, he never ran again. There are some that say Secretariat broke Sham's heart in that Belmont Stakes on the backstretch, but the real reason for him never running was because of an injury suffered in a workout as he was getting back to the races in July of 1973. Retired to stud, he was considered a mediocre stallion at best. After 20 years of stud duty, he suddenly died of heart failure in April of 1993. It was at this time that it was discovered Sham shared in another amazing fact with his arch rival that triple crowned year of 1973. When he was necropsied, the term for an animal autopsy, Secretariat was said to have a heart that was at least twice the size of a normal thoroughbreds, something that was believed to give him a lot of his amazing ability to run as fast and far as he did. Sham was found to have the second largest heart, weighing in at 19 pounds. The same doctor did both necropsies. Remember, Secretariat was euthanized because of laminitis just a few years earlier, and said that Secretariat and Sham had the largest and second largest hearts he had ever seen or recorded. So if Sham's heart was indeed broken on that humid, historic afternoon of the backstretch of iconic Belmont Park, it was only able to be accomplished by one who had a heart bigger than his. If you're an incredibly passionate Thoroughbred racing fan and want to find a whole bunch of people that are just like you, why not check out Thoroughfan at thoroughfan.com. Sign up to become a member, get our amazing weekly newsletter, and learn everything and anything there is to know 
about this amazing sport we call thoroughbred horse racing. Thoroughfan, giving the fans a voice. <laughs>